Hey guys. This building here is called Baidinuev. And a long, 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 long time ago, my family lived here. And I like coming here because I feel that I belong. I feel rooted. In Welsh, we call it hereif, a feeling of belonging. And nature's taken it back. And I like that. I think there's something really uh, special, circular. The fact that my family came here and they built the stones and they cut the land and they farmed the fields. And now, ever so slowly, nature's taking it back, pulling the walls down. And I think in a few years, no one will know it's here. You can't see it anymore. You have to know it's here to even get here. Anyway, I've come here to tell you a couple of stories. And the first story is a story that I read uh, a few days ago. Now, it's a creation story, and I'm not very fond of telling creation stories. Um, I don't have faith that has a creation story. Um, so telling creation stories always feel a little bit wrong, like I'm using other people's. But, uh, but this one is fab, and it's uh, really applicable to what's going on in the world today and how we're um, not taking care of the planet. Uh, and it goes like this. In the beginning, there was nothing. No mountains, no trees, no rivers, no seas, no animals at all. And then came a tribe of people. And these people were every single colour imaginable. Black people, white people, pink people, blue people. Green people and yellow people. Mauve people. Gold people. And when they got there, they were terrified and scared and cold. And so they got together in a great big rainbow pile of people. And when they got into their pile, they started to talk and they came up with a plan. And their plan was that they would turn themselves into everything the planet needed to survive. And so some lay down and turned themselves into the mountains. Others flowed into rivers. Some melted and became the sea. Some stretched their arms really tall and became the trees and others the lichen that grows on the bark. Some grew four legs and became the running creatures and others lost their legs and became the slivering creatures. Others grew tails and fins and dived into the rivers and the ocean and became the swimming creatures. Others were left without anything to do and they became us the humans. And they looked after every single thing on that planet, on that earth, because they knew that everything was their brothers and sisters. And that is why today we should cry when a tree is chopped down, because it's our brother. And we should weep when the whale is killed in the ocean because it is our sister. We are not separate, we are connected. The end. I like that story. Now, the next story, short as well, is about this place. And it's a family story, it's been passed down. And it goes like this. Long, long time ago, my great, 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 great grandmother lived here in this house. And she was a wise woman, a herbalist, a doctor of sorts. People would come to the house if they had any trouble at all, any illnesses, uh, uh, if they were pregnant, if they were stressed out or worried about something, they'd come to see her. 
And one day she was sitting outside the front of the house when the local children from the village down below here, Abergenolan, came running past in floods of tears. And she stopped them and called them over and said, what was wrong with you? And they said, oh, it's that old woman up there in the old town in the end there. She's cursed us. And when my granny got to the bottom of the story, as there always is with kids, they'd been playing knock and run on the old hag, the old witchy woman's house, and she'd caught them, and she had cursed them. And they believed in those sort of things then. And so, terrified and upset, they'd started to run home. So the granny said, listen, you lot, don't worry, I'll sort it out. And with that, she put her big old coat on her boots and she stormed off up to the Hendre, the old village, and she knocked on the old hag's door and the old hag came to the door. And she said, listen, don't you be threatening the children. Pick on somebody your own size. And so the old hag said, fine, I'll curse you instead. And they had a blazing row. And later on, my granny came home, and the very next day, her cows, which were in the field on the other side of the house here, started to get ill. And she tried to cure them with the herbs and the things she knew, but nothing worked. And slowly, one by one, the cows started to die. And so she needed some extra advice, some extra help. And the last resort was to go all the way over the top of the mountain, past Munevrid Galed, the hard hill, and over and down to Machanclef where lived a wizard. And this wizard was supposed to be the best at animal curing. And so she went over and she paid him for his time and he told her to put the sick cows in the cow shed and burn it down. And so she came over here, she did that and she burnt the cow shed. And of course, none of the other cows got ill. And she thought this was deepest magic. We know today all she did was to burn the disease that was killing the cows. But my old granny, she was so impressed with this that she renamed the house. I don't know the original name. I wish I did. But the house is now called Baidi Nuev, the new shed, the new cow shed. And I love it here. Thanks for listening, you guys. Ta-da!